is part three of our conversation with Tower of Power. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. In this series, we talk to three of the main guys in this band. Leader, tenor sax player, and lead vocalist, Emilio Castillo. And on baritone sax, Stephen Doc Kupka. And legendary drummer, David Garibaldi. What was it? Was there a catalyst, Emilio, that made you go, I can't do that anymore? Well, the last year of my drinking and using, mostly I was using because when I drank, I got pancreatitis. And uh, I had always been hospitalized with pancreatitis, maybe like 10 times all over the nation. And so I would go long periods using narcotics, you know, but I always went back to the booze, you know. And so by the end, I was drinking and using, and it wasn't even working. I mean, I had plenty of dope, you know, so I shouldn't be jonesing. I shouldn't be, you know, you know, uh, you know feeling withdrawal symptoms, but I did. You know, my nose was running, my eyes were watering, you know, I got the sweats, I got the chicken skin, cold, you know. Um, it was like I was jonesing for dope, but I had plenty and I was drinking too and I couldn't even get drunk. So and what that is that? What, what, why is that happening? Stop working. I don't know. I just stopped working. And every day I tell myself, you know, I, you know, I got to stop because I'm spending all my money. My marriage is falling apart. Everything's falling apart. And the career, you know, even though I had money and things were going okay, it was nowhere where it should have been. And I knew that, you know, but I couldn't stop. And so I was totally ashamed, you know, why can't I be, I mean, I saw people that sort of got it together. I didn't know how they did it. But I could not. Every time I, I made the vow, which was daily, you know, within a couple hours, I used, you know. And uh, so, and the other thing was, I didn't want to die. You know, I, I hear people at meetings all the time go, you know, I just wanted to die. I'd get up in the morning and say, God, why did I get up? Not me, man. I wanted to live, you know. But I knew I was going to die. I knew I wasn't going to see 40, and I was already 37. So, uh that was my mindset. And then I went in and I saw this lecture on the 12 steps. I realized that I could stop. And I was like, I'm doing this, man. I'm doing it. I walked out. The nurse was looking for me because they had me in all these anti-seizure drugs and Valium and stuff like that because I had been taking a lot of narcotics. And she says, you know, where have you been? When you got to take your meds, you know? I said, I'm not taking another drug as long as I live. And she goes, no, 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 no. You could have a seizure. And I go, sorry, I'm not taking it. And she said, uh, I'm going to have to call your doctor. And I said, well, you better get him on the phone because I ain't taking it. And uh, God bless him. You know, she got this guy on the phone and he says, if that's the way he feels about it, God bless him. And uh, never drink and used again. Well, I remember when I was talking to Emilio and I knew the story before that there was a part of you that, yeah, it's when in Rome, but it, it became too much for you. That's is that why you left initially? You kept you kept leaving. Sure. Well, you know. Rome fell from within, <laughs> you know, it was innocent in the beginning. We made a little money, you know, smoke a little weed, you know, have a few drinks, that kind of stuff. It was very, very innocent. And then it became very sinister because then heroin and cocaine showed up and that started to steal everybody's personality. Cause that's what usually what happens. It just turns, transforms you into another person, somebody that you're not. And I had to get out of there. I didn't want to do that stuff, man. I, I, I saw where it was taking everybody and kind of what it was doing to the creativity of the band. And these were my brothers, man. I mean, I love these guys. And it was so hurtful to see that. And that, so I just had to leave. I had to get out of there. And so I left four times. It was like every time I come back, it was like a chick, you know, who you have a relationship with and it's not working and you come back and then realize, okay, that's not cool. And then you go again. Right. So Four times I did that. I go back in the band and it would be the same. It'd be worse. Right. And so finally, you know, Mimi and Doc hit bottom. And they were, I have to say, Mimi's the most loaded person I've ever known in my life. Nobody could do more dope than him or drink more alcohol. Nobody could do any of it more than him. And he's alive today. He made it through, you know, and so Doc was the same way. So when those guys got themselves cleaned up, I kind of was a, the enemy of the band for a while. Because, you know, when you're around a bunch of people that are dopers and you're not, you're the enemy. And, you know, because you're square. And so I was the enemy for a long time. Well, when 
I moved back to the Bay Area in 1989. Over that period of time, I was doing a lot of work around here and that kind of stuff. And I met a guy named Jeff Tamalera, who was playing guitar. He's a guitar player. He's one of the first people I met here when I came back to Bay Area. He introduced me, all his friends, and, and we just had a great, great time together. I loved that guy. He just gave me a life, you know, because I had nothing when I came back here. And it turns out he got a gig with the Tower. He got the gig playing guitar with the Tower. And he'd always say, why don't you come and come and see us, man? Come and hang out. I said, no, bunch of losers, man. I'm not interested in that. I don't want to play the music. I don't want to do any of it. So I went to see them at the Fillmore. Finally, I agreed to go see them. They were playing at the Fillmore. Herman was playing drums. And um, I kind of see that everybody's together, right? So not long after that, I, I worked on Doc's first solo recording, Stroke Land Super Band, Kick It Up a Step. I think that was what it was called. And I noticed that everybody was really together. You know, Rocco was playing, playing. Uh, Doc was there, of course. And Rocco was doing his own overdubs. He's in, this, in the control room. He's doing his own overdubs. I thought, what, what, what kind of shit is this? You know? <laughs> and it was just, it was amazing. Then not long after that, Tower had gone to, to Europe and Herman decided to leave the band. So Jeff and Mimi called me from Europe and they asked, would I be interested in coming back? People have always asked me, why did you ever not go back to the band? Well, they, they, for 18 years, they never asked me. You know, that wasn't ever in the conversation. They didn't want me around. And so Mimi and Jeff called and Mimi and I had this long conversation and um, so we decided to do just a tour of Japan. They had a tour of Japan coming up and we were going to do this tour and sort of see if we still liked each other. Mm -hmm. So this was 1998. And so go to rehearsals and it's great. I mean, we just kind of fell right back into it. And then as life would have it, the Japan tour canceled. So I just started doing all the gigs. I just started doing the gigs like I was, you know, like it was my gig. It took about six months for me to get really comfortable again with everything. And I think we were at the North Sea Jazz Festival that summer in the Netherlands. And all of a sudden, I just felt like I was back home again. And I've been there since. Was there a catalyst that made you say that's enough? Yeah, um, I had lost credibility in the band. In other words, you know, uh, just look at the drunken idiot. Uh, and then listen to what he's saying, you know, yeah. so so wrong. And when you lose credibility that way, then even if you're saying good stuff, it's uh, it comes out bad. <clears throat> so I lost credibility. I finally surrendered to that fact and... Uh, that my life was a mess and took it from there. Well, I have more of our conversation with a great Tower of Power coming up in three, four days. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. <laughs> <laughs>